All right, guys. So this, the first half of this talk is about um, the FLIR 1 SDK. So this is all for all the hackers. Uh, you guys already have seen the hardware. Uh, there's an internal LiPo battery, something that people have already asked. Um, the Android does not support continuous usage. So that means that it cannot charge the Android FLIR 1 and your phone at the same time. Uh, that's a firmware issue that we can resolve, but as of today, that's not working. Um, the iOS one is reversible, as you guys have known. That's, um, yeah. OK, so the SDK um, is really straightforward. Um, it has a bunch of functions for receiving frame data, but also for saving a lot of um, utility functions. Um, and there's also some sample data that we've already put in there, so you don't need physical hardware. Uh, the iOS SDK, um, it's Objective-C only. We don't have plans to support Swift. Um, iOS 7 Plus, there's uh, a bundled example Xcode project, and it's multi-threaded. It's real-time and asynchronous. The Android SDK is a little bit different. Um, support for Android 4.3. Uh, and again, there's a bundled example project that's, that's pretty useful. A lot of people ask if you know one's better than the other, um, and there's there's pros and cons to each one. The iOS SDK actually released with um, the first Gen Flare one, and it was only iOS. So with the Gen one, we had a lot of time with the iOS to to get it in a good place. Um, iOS is Objective C only. Uh, the Android App Store submission process, as you guys probably know, it's it's a lot easier than the iOS one. Um, with Android, you can do some remote debugging. iOS, it's a little tricky. Uh, and again, there's all kinds of Android devices. So if you, have, if you want your app to work on different formats, then you should probably go to Android. But again, you guys only have you know, 20 hours left to do this. So I would pick which one you know best. I, I don't think you guys should waste any time learning something new. Um, so there's documentation for everything. Uh, obviously, there's a. Uh, on our Flare developer site, this is all available. Uh, so getting started, just download the SDK, unzip it, find the sample project, build it, and deploy it. Um, that's, that's the first thing you guys should do. And I, I bet a bunch of you guys have already done that. Test it. A lot of people actually start with these example projects and just build on top of it for these hackathons. I highly suggest that you do that. Or just copy and paste code, um, because the project settings are already set up. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> um, instantiating in iOS is pretty straightforward. You include all of our libraries. Um, one, th one thing to mention with um, iOS is that the, the FLIR 1 SDK has OpenCV, OpenCV bundled with it. So if you try to import OpenCV into our project with FLIR 1, uh, there, there's actually going to be a bunch of namespace collisions. We're trying to fix that. But if you run into that, um, just take note and know that um, it's coming. Um, so with iOS, we set up everything using delegates. So um, the first thing you'll want to do is set up the delegate um, and subscribe to that. Um, once you implement the delegate, um, and there's a bunch. So this, this delegate here is called did receive blended MSX. So every time the Flare 1 sends an MSX, MSX image to the iPhone, this function is called. So that happens nine times a second. Um, and you're, you're going to want to do this in your UI thread. If you guys don't use proper threading, your, your application will run like junk. So make sure you guys properly thread. Um, it's pretty similar in Android. Um, you have to extend some activities or implement some activities, um, pass in some options. And we have this thing in the Android SDK called a frame processor. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's a singleton, but you need multiple frame processors. Um, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. And it, again, it's the same thing. There's a, there's a callback on frame processed. Um, and depending on what options you passed in, um, you'll be able to, to grab the different um, arrays that you want. So again, both of these are event driven. Um, you include the libraries and you listen for, you, you create listener objects and instantiate them. Um, 
So one example here is we do have a delegate on the iOS for did connect. So when you plug in the iOS um, FLIR 1 into your phone, it'll call this function and, um, yeah. OK, and oh, so is dongle. Um, for you guys who haven't seen it, there's, again, there's two versions of the, the FLIR 1. The first one was a sled that you plugged your phone into. Um, the second gen, which is the one you guys have seen, is a dongle. We, we need to set this value so that we know if, you, if you're flipping it in the right orientation or not. Um, and just a couple of sample callbacks for iOS. There's connection callbacks. You're given access to the battery level. Um, tuning state. So tuning state is uh, something I'll get into in the next set of slides. But um, if, you, if you listen, if you put your FLIR one next to your ear, you hear a click every so often, like every two minutes. That's performing a, a calibration. Um, and our SDK will actually uh, let you know if a calibration is happening. So if you've seen the FLIR 1 and you've seen your video freeze as you're panning around, it's probably because it's doing a calibration. So it closes the shutter. It uh, runs a uniform correction. Um, so it's not your phone that's lagging. It's just performing a flat field correction. Um, so you can actually control how often it does that and know when it's flat fielding in case you're doing something really um, important. Can we turn it off? You can turn off. Um, Yes, I believe you can turn it off manually, but um, yeah. Uh, are you using Android? Yeah. OK, you, you most definitely can do that in Android. I'm not sure about iOS, but in Android, I think you can. Um, so here are just a couple of the frame-related callbacks. So um, if you wanted all of this, you could, but you wouldn't need to. So let's, let's talk about these image for formats. So these, all of these callbacks here, refer to a different type of format. Um, so visible is exactly what you think it is. It's just the JPEG image from the visible camera. Radiometric and thermal, they're, they're kind of related, OK? Radiometric, if you're, if you're using the FLIR 1, radiometric means that's the actual temperature values in Kelvin. Um, thermal is uh, it's the visual representation of the radiometric data after it's passed through some normalization functions. So all those pretty colors, if you're subscribing to the thermal callback, um, you're only going to get those nice pictures. Um, so for, for all of you who are actually doing real temperature things, radiometric is the most important. Yeah. Fully radiometric. It's fully radiometric, yeah. Um, and MSX is uh, the visible and the thermal overlaid, as you guys have seen. Um, FLIR file format, I think, if I go back, uh, FLIR file format is um, the thermal 14-bit linear flux image. Um, so f this, this is a proprietary file format that FLIR has created. This will let you export to a bunch of enterprise tools. So in the thermography space, um, people who live in the thermal world with thermal cameras, they're most interested in this file format. Um, it, it, it contains the radiometric it's, if you look, if you open the file, you'll see that it's just the radiometric, but it, it tells you what um, what color palette to use, all of the all of the metadata associated with that. So you could, with this, you could reproduce all of these, but it takes some work. And here's uh, FLIR tools for OSX. There's a Windows version. I think people have ported this to Linux, but um, this is enterprise grade. This is what um, most of our customers are used to working with. OK, so debugging is going to be a big part of your project. Um, there's the iOS simulator. It has sample frames. Um, I, I, I haven't used the Android simulator very often, but when I talk to our Android devs, they always just say, if you're having problems, just use the actual hardware. OK, so a couple of common things that I see people working with. And you can just read through this, but I'll read it through. Um, if your image isn't showing up, the first thing to check is your battery level. It sounds stupid, but uh, I've seen it happen. Quite often, um, this is they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the other last one I want to mention is that are you updating your UI? Um, this is um, it's UI management. I, I I don't know how else to say that, but um, okay. If your if your application is running really slowly, they're check for memory leaks. If you're oversubscribing, so let's go back to here. Don't don't subscribe to any of these if you don't want to. So. In iOS, you tell it which frames you want before you start your frame processor. 
Don't start your frame processor with the default options. If you're trying to optimize, try to only pick which ones you need. So really think about, in your app, do you really need the radio metric? Or do you really need the FLIR file format? If you don't, just cut it out. OK. Um, and again, memory leaks are a big thing because these functions, those callbacks, are called nine times per second. Um, so memory leaks will, will you know, come into play really quickly. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a bunch of forums that you know, we've done this a couple times. People ask really good questions on there. Um, read the docs. And again, the sample projects are your best resource to getting moving as quickly as possible. So yeah, that's, that's the hackerspace. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, uh, maybe nine. nine. Yeah. Can I import other? Yes. So if you're gonna create your own color palettes, yeah. um, I'll go. I'll go over that in the next talk.